So what's the deal with autofocus? Is it cheating? Should I go with manual focus? Why are my pictures sometimes blurry? All these questions and more, I'm gonna be answering in this week's video, so stick around. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I do photography tutorials, I share tips and tricks, and occasionally I do gear reviews as well. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. This video is kindly brought to you by Skillshare. And in this week's video, we're gonna take a look at autofocus. Does autofocus rock? Or should we be doing it old school and using manual focus? Now the inspiration for this video came after a conversation that I was having with one of my students on one of my photography courses a couple of weeks back. They were a little bit confused about which focus mode to use. Surely the professionals go with manual focus and autofocus is just cheating. Well, I've done a number of videos all about focusing and different focus modes, but because it's such an integral part of um, photography and something you definitely want to nail and get right, I thought I would touch base on this one once again. So is autofocus cheating? What mode do the professional photographers prefer to use? And manual focus, how do you actually do it? These are the sorts of questions that I want to touch on in this video. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll already know that I teach photography for a living. My goal is to help you get more from your digital camera by showing you the benefits of getting out of auto and into the manual mode so you can change some of the key camera features. And if you want to follow along um, with some of the things that I'm going to be talking about in this video, you might want to grab your camera and put it either in the manual mode if you're feeling confident with your camera or if you're a beginner, set your camera mode dial to P, which is program. Now, when I got my first camera, which was similar to this Pentax film camera here, it was manual focus only. There was no automatic focus. Um, to do that, it was quite simple. You just adjusted the focus ring on the lens um, and it was great. But my second camera had automatic focus and this really changed things for me. Now, all I had to do was press the shutter button halfway down. The camera automatically focused. It was efficient. It was quick. It was great. I quickly fell in love with automatic focus, but it wasn't perfect. Which takes me back to the conversation I was having with one of my students just a couple of weeks ago. That particular person was very keen on taking photos of birds, but they were really struggling to get a nice sharp photo. So the question they were asking me was, should I go manual focus? Would that solve the problem? And my answer was, yes, manual focus could solve the problem, but automatic focus is almost certainly the way to go. But you need to know how to get the most from automatic focus. And that's what we're gonna be looking at in this video. Now there is more to autofocus than simply pressing the button halfway down. And if that's all you're doing, then you're missing out because pressing the button halfway down is asking the camera to focus without giving it any more information such as what to focus on. So the camera focuses on what it assumes is the subject and sometimes it will focus on something else, which may explain why sometimes you take photos and your subject looks sharp and sometimes it's out of focus. Now this is a common autofocus issue and it's certainly not one that we can't fix very easily. So grab your camera, turn it on, and we're not going to be using the live view. We're going to be using the viewfinder for this. Now with the camera in autofocus, what I want you to do is put the camera up to your eye, look through the viewfinder and press the shutter button just halfway down. Now you should hear a beep. That's the camera letting you know it's focused. But if you look carefully through the viewfinder, look out for some flashing red markers green markers or flashing squares or something similar. It depends on the camera. Now these are your focus points. Now what your camera's doing here is it's showing you where it's focused. Now, autofocus is great, but if we don't get a bit more involved and tell the camera what to focus on, it's gonna focus on what it thinks is the subject. So for example, if I point the camera at a subject, press the shutter button halfway down, and with this Canon camera, I see a little flashing red marker and it's in the middle of my frame then that's good news because if my subject is in the middle of the frame and the camera's using a focus point in the middle of the frame, my subject should be in focus. But what you'll see sometimes is this can be a bit random. So if you press the shutter button several times, looking through the viewfinder, you might find that your focus points move around. And that's because the camera actually doesn't know what the subject is. It's choosing different subjects. It's focusing on what it thinks the subject might be. Now this isn't ideal. So when I'm taking a picture, one of the first things I do after I've decided on my composition is I tell the camera where my subject is and on what I want it to focus on. 
So I'm going to show you how to select and change the focus points on a Canon camera and in a moment on a Nikon camera. With the Canon camera we start by finding and pressing the plus button on the back of the camera. This brings up our focus points, currently yellow, this is auto selection. If you press the set button you can go straight to the middle focus point, pressing it again defaults back to auto selection. But turning the wheel on the top of the camera allows you to manually choose focus points individually. And I do recommend trying this whilst looking through the viewfinder as well. So moving on to a Nikon camera and here we have a Nikon D3500. Now on the back of the LCD screen the word auto tells me that the camera is in control of the focus points. This is something I want to change so I'm now going to press the I button. This allows me to change some of the camera features and I'm going to select autofocus area mode. Now on this camera we have four options, these may be different depending on which camera you have and we're going to select the single point autofocus which is pretty much a default setting on most of the Nikon cameras. Press OK to select and press the I button to reset the screen. You'll see the word auto is now gone and I can now move and select the focus points individually by using the multi selector on the back of the camera. So controlling the focus points and selecting them individually is actually quite easy to do and incredibly important. If you're not going to do that, you might as well go back to shooting in auto. Now we're going to look at another focus feature, which is called focus mode. Your camera has a focus mode that is designed for shooting things that aren't moving, but equally your camera has a focus mode that is designed for shooting things that do move. This is pretty cool. Now before we get into this, I just want to tell you about a very special offer from Skillshare. Now there's never been a better time to learn new skills, so if you're creative like myself, then check out Skillshare, an online learning community for creatives. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video and much more for just $10 a month with an annual subscription. But as a subscriber to this channel, you can try it for free. This week I've been watching a video on creative storytelling and editing with Nikki Stevens. Now don't forget the first 1000 of my subscribers who click on the link in the description below this video can get a two month free trial of premium membership with Skillshare. So why not explore your creativity and learn something new with Skillshare. So now we're going to take a look at focus modes. Now depending on what type of photography you want to do will depend on how you set your camera up. So your camera has a focus mode designed for non-moving subjects which would suit landscape photographers, architecture photographers and it also has a focus mode designed for moving subject which would obviously suit people that like to photograph sports events, maybe wildlife. Now I'm going to show you how to set this up. It's pretty simple. We're going to take a look at a Nikon camera but first we're going to take a look at a Canon camera. To change the focus mode on a Canon camera we begin by pressing the AF button and we will see there are three options. Now to change these we can use the buttons on the back of the camera, select the option you want, press set to choose. An alternative is to press the AF button, turn the dial on the top of the camera to choose the option, again pressing set. Now there are three options available, the default is one shot, this is for non-moving subjects and servo is for moving subjects. AI focus is the auto option and I'm choosing the default one shot mode. And moving on to the Nikon camera we begin by pressing the I button. This allows us to choose and change the settings and we're going to choose focus mode. Pressing the OK button allows us to see the options currently set to AFA but we're going to select AFS. This is autofocus single, designed for non-moving subjects and the picture of a tree illustrates why you might use this mode, landscape being a non-moving subject. Now once you pressed OK you've set the mode, to change it again you press the I button and we're now going to select the AFC mode which is for moving subjects, hence the picture of somebody on a surfboard. And once again we press the OK button to select the mode. Now some time ago I did make a separate video all about focus modes where I go into a bit more detail and also demonstrate how it works. It's a popular video it's worth taking a look at so I'll put a link in the description below this video and I'll also pop a link up here in case you want to check it out.
Now camera technology is constantly evolving, so as well as these focus modes, some of the higher end cameras and the professional cameras now also have features such as eye detection and face detection, and some cameras can even detect eyes on animals as well, which is pretty neat. And if this is something you'd like to know more about maybe in a future video, just leave a comment down below. Now I generally recommend autofocus over manual focus to my students based on one key thing, and that is that a camera like this can focus quicker than I or you can manually. Now that may not be a deal breaker for a landscape photographer, but it really is if you want to now a photo of your dog running around the dog park, take a great photo of your kids on sports day, or shoot any moving subject. All you gotta do is make sure you implement the tips I've taught you in this video. Make sure you tell the camera where the subject is by controlling the focus points and choose the appropriate mode. The focus mode for moving subjects or the focus mode for non-moving subjects. Now, as much as I love automatic focus, nothing's perfect. So I think it would be unfair to let you guys go without briefly talking a bit about manual focus, when and why to use manual focus. And if you've never used manual focus before, it's actually pretty straightforward. Let me show you how it works. If your lens has a switch on the side, simply selecting MF turns off the autofocus and you are now able to manually adjust the lens. Alternatively, some cameras have a switch on the side of the body like this Fujifilm camera. And if you can't find a switch on the body or the lens like this Nikon example, then all you need to do is press the I button on the back of your Nikon, go to the focus modes and select MF for manual focus. So now I want to talk about the benefits of manually focusing a lens, um, something I think everyone should at least know how to do. Number one, poor light. If you're taking a photo at night time, maybe the stars in the night sky, or anywhere where light is not good, then a camera may struggle to focus and manual focus may be the only solution to the problem. If you're trying to photograph a subject that lacks contrast, cameras sometimes struggle with this. Again, manual focus may be the solution. And finally, if you're doing close-up photography, often called macro photography, cameras again sometimes struggle here. Again, manual focus may be the solution to the problem. So manual focus is clearly very useful, but I, I mainly see it as a solution to the problem. My personal preference is to use automatic focus, and if autofocus is struggling, that's when I pull manual focus out of the bag. Autofocus is the way I have my camera set up. I don't see it as cheating. It's another tool that we can use to enable us to capture the images we want. When I think back, there are images that I've taken in the past that I simply would not have got had I had to manually focus the lens. In my view, autofocus rocks. Now don't forget the first 1,000 of my subscribers who click on the link in the description below this video can get a two month free trial of premium membership with Skillshare. And I want to say a big thank you to Skillshare for supporting my channel and sponsoring this video. If you've enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up, consider subscribing to my channel, and don't forget down below, you can leave your comments, suggestions, and questions. I'll see you again soon. See ya, bye.